channel you know my name is clinton the explorer i travel to new cities and new towns to meet up with strangers to explore and make the best out of my trip and you all know right now i am in siaya county and particularly i am in mageta island and i had the pleasure to visit one of the top schools uh, here in mageta island it's called mitundu primary school maybe you can just show them around how the school looks like it's a primary school here in Mageta Island and I have the pleasure to, to talk to uh, the teachers of this school uh, just to learn a little history about the school and uh, what is happening around here so maybe if I might uh, want to introduce them you can just tell us your name uh, maybe which subject you teach and uh, yeah my name is uh, Simon Roach. I teach uh, English, Science and uh, Agriculture. Okay. Yes. Then guys, you all know, that is uh, Waziri, Victor. Onyango. <laughs> I'm a BOM member in Tundu Primary School. Then I'm um, Sospita Nguengi Ukelo. Wow. Uh, teacher here as well. Wow. Awesome. So these are the residents as well as the teachers of this beautiful school here in uh, in Mageta Island. Uh, this is one of the six, uh, you told me when we were, when we were talking like uh, in Mageta Island we only have six schools or how many schools do you have generally in Mageta? So there are six. There are six yeah. of which you have only four which are government owned then two which are private. Yeah, one private primary and uh, one, one secondary. One secondary. Yeah. Ah, yeah. So this is one of the six schools uh, that uh, are located here in uh, in Mageta. So this is Mitundu pra Primary School, and uh, you said you teach which subject? Uh, English. English. Yeah. Wow. So you have mastered the Queen's language. <laughs> <laughs> you must have mastered the Queen's language. Wow. Yeah. So maybe you can tell us uh, a brief history about your school, like when you guys started and uh, yeah, when did the school start? Okay, um, the primary school started in 1986. Yeah. It was started by the um, <coughs> Mageta community okay. uh, to ease the problem of uh, many <coughs> learners who had to commute a uh, long distance uh -huh. from uh, Magare, which is actually uh, very far from here, okay. uh, to Mageta, which was uh, okay. by then the only school. Okay. Okay. Uh, so it started in 1986. So ever since since 1986 up to date, the school has been in operation. Yes. Wow, that is awesome. Uh -huh. So, uh, you guys have got, uh, do you run from class 1 to class 8? Is it from nursery school up to class 8? Yeah, actually it is from nursery school mm -hmm. to class 8. Uh -huh. So since 2000, uh, since the school started, the school was started. Uh -huh. Now the, the exam must have been done for around 30 years, for 7 years of movement from class 1 from to class 8. From class 1 to class 8, because I understand the school started from class 1. Yeah. If they did not adapt it like... They didn't the, start yeah. it from class 8. From class 8? Yeah. Okay, that is, that is awesome. Uh, how, uh, another question, I want to understand what are the good things that are happening around here you as the residents or others the teachers what do you appreciate about the school uh, what are some of the good things that you appreciate like uh, the school is doing and uh, it's also helping maybe your learners to keep up with the economic situation maybe in terms of books in terms of the resources around the school what the, the school offers, the environment, or the parents? Yeah, let's start maybe with the, with the government. What the government is. The government very resourceful or rather helpful in terms of uh, providing its services. Yes, the government has, is, I think is very helpful because the yeah. books are provided for, the yes. teachers are posted by the government. Yeah, and uh, in terms of uh, the teachers, you face the teachers. Do you have enough teachers around here? Uh, that's another challenge. The teachers are not really enough because of other challenges that accompany the island. Okay. Yeah. Maybe you can talk to the camera and maybe talk to uh, the Ministry of Education. You can maybe advise them uh, just in a good way uh, 
advise them maybe if you have a shortage of teachers and you'd love them to be brought so that uh, we can improve the level of uh, quality of yeah, yeah. yeah, I think uh, one thing the government can do maybe is to uh, to provide incentives yes. to teachers brought to such schools like in an island because it's yes. actually you find uh, okay there are challenges a company for you to once you come here you forget things like emergency exactly. you know, for us who don't come from the state uh, our homes are not here exactly, yeah. you have left your home elsewhere yeah. now the boat has is uh, scheduled such that there are specific times you can leave yeah, yeah, you cannot yeah. just leave the lake anytime you want exactly. the boat will be leaving at two so exactly. there you can't manage any emergency yeah. unless you depend on these other people now the, the boat now for you to come from like you saying it here i don't know it's, it's a very short distance Mm -hmm. But then the 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 the, the fare there mm -hmm. it's like 200 now anytime you come 200 200 mm -hmm. going 200 you have your motorcycle again you have to pay for that one True. so if the government could bring maybe certain uh, incentives yeah. so maybe like hardship allowance because even uh -huh. here you've realized even your network is it's not that true. steady the network is very down. Mm. It's so very we, down. we can't yeah. make calls at will as well you have to struggle a little bit yeah. sometimes you want to go into the internet which is uh, this online learning yeah you have to choose a specific point mm -hmm. now with this specific point with the network problem you still don't have uh, uh, now the network is not there, you still don't have even electricity to charge your laptop, exactly. charge your phone. Ah, like I, I've ah. told you I'm forced to work with my you power bank. Power bank every, okay. time. <laughs> every time. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to also know uh, what is the number of students you guys have around here? Because I understand it's an island. What is the number of students, the capacity of students, all the way from class one or rather from nursery all the way up to class eight? Okay, from nursery. And nowadays, actually, we refer to uh, that uh, section as uh, early year education. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, uh, the new curriculum uh, demands. Yes. So we have uh, roughly 380. 380 in total. Yes. Oh, that's quite a good number. Yeah. That's quite a good number. Wow. So since you have like 380 students, now let's come to the resources around this place. Is water available for the students? Maybe because I understand it's very hot around here. Is yeah. like uh, resources like water available? Maybe for use, maybe for drinking and stuff like that. Are you guys accessed to clean drinking water? Okay, we have water from the lake, yeah, uh, which has to be transported to the school. Which means by which means now? Um. What are the main sources, uh, sources or other means of transport around around this area? Do you guys use donkeys, use motorbikes, or is it human labor? For the school, basically, it's yeah. for human, it's human labor. Fetching water, literally, you go to the lake go and fetch, the water. Lake, fetch water. So for the school here, we bought a generator, which sometimes ah, ran out have, of fuel. You have a generator? Yeah, wow, that's which was, I think it was bought by the NGO, yeah. Beyond Limitation. Beyond so they give us one generator and a tank. Okay. Uh, tank is somewhere there. Ah, I can see the tank. 10,000 liter capacity. Uh -huh. So sometimes mm -hmm. the, the generator, unless we run out of fuel, mm -hmm. and we just use the learners to fetch the water the physically and bring water. it here. Then we treat it. Ah, so it must be treated before you yeah, guys use it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I also see on top of your roof, you guys have adapted solar energy. Wow, which is a very good thing. You guys are helping the country into the Vision 2030. You must adapt green energy. You don't just need to depend on uh, the Kenya power. Yeah. So my question is, how effective is the solar energy around this place? Okay, um, it used to be, okay, that is specifically our system used to be very effective. Yeah. But as we speak now, yeah. It is not that effective. It's not uh, that effective. batteries are... What are the, some of the things that are maybe, maybe a donor might be watching or somebody who wants to support you guys might be watching. Maybe you can talk to them. Uh, maybe my cameraman might, might just show mm -hmm. them the project. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'd like you uh, maybe to talk to somebody who might be watching, maybe a donor or somebody who would like to support the school. Since you understand, we are in a very difficult uh, location maybe talking to them what would you want them to assist you in improving on this project that you had started uh, the solar energy project okay um we would appeal to any well wisher yeah uh, or donor who may have uh, uh, a heart to assist our school yeah 
being uh, situated in a very unique area that is an island. Yeah. Uh, basically, uh, to help us yeah. um, get effective uh, uh, batteries yes. uh, to help us run the, our solar system in the school. Okay. Because as we speak now, yeah. uh, we have a problem or a challenge with our power system. Okay. Our school is not connected. Yeah, guys, and just so you know, we don't have electricity in Margeta Island. It's something uh, I think maybe the county government or rather the uh, national government is trying to work on it. I think they are trying to set up a, a mini uh, solar grid within the island. But for now, everybody who wants to get access to electricity or rather uh, to energy, must adapt solar energy and that is what the school has done you can